technology is a double-edged sword in the sense that um, technology enables us to do so much more and there's so much more to, to do and to know, but at the same time, we have to uh, adhere to so many things because of the, the technology and then the people who actually really control it, who are slowly and more rapidly losing control of it because of technology itself, they do more to, uh, to tighten the grip, you know, on, on people, um, these freak, I mean, everything from the frequencies that are emitted from your phone that come to your phone and it has to pass by and through you in order to get to your phone to, you know, I mean, we practically these days live on our phones. I think the, the modus operandi, the, the, um, the elevation that has been programmed with a lot of people as far as like, you know, because Christianity for the most part, I can say in the, in the urban background, the urban, uh, you know, the cities and, you know, the big cities has been like, okay, Christ, Christianity is the, the staple. You know, that's where most of us were raised in, something Protestant, right? And then, you know, once you, you branch out, you know, the first thing you, you bump your head on is maybe Islam. I basically not only studied, but I lived, you know, the three main institutionalized religions being Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. And um, I found numerous similarities, so many similarities. The, um, the pantheons, of course, as we know, like in Islam and Christianity and Judaism are the same. You know, when you talk about the angels, the angelic beings, um, you know, in Christianity, it's the arch, the archangels, you know, with God. And then you have, um, in Islam, you have the, the same thing, but, you know, they call them um, Allahumma, which is Allah and his angelic hosts. And then you have um, the archangels or you have the Elohim in uh, Judaism, which, you know, was from the Hebrew today they have um, grafted into a form called Yiddish, which is the spoken language. Uh, so I studied that for a amount of years. There's similarities, and then there are other things, you know, things that are within these books, you know, be it the Quran and uh, the, the Torah, and, you know, which mostly is the Old Testament, and then you have the New Testament, where it proves that there are things outside of what is being taught. So what people are taught as far as religion is the interpretation of a lot of these things that are written, but um, can be interpreted in different ways because it has been translated. So, you know, the, the form that it was actually set in you know, has been changed. So the meaning can be changed. The interpretations are changed. You know, like for instance, you know, they have the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis is like uh, the original name of, of those texts or was called Barashith. You know, and Barashith meant the, the making. It didn't mean like the creation, you know, which they tell you Genesis means like the super beginning. There was nothing before then, you know, it, it means making and making or manufacturing does not have anything to do with an original creation. It's talking about something that's being made. It not, it's not talking about something that's being created from nothing. So there are a lot of misconceptions and uh, the misconception lies within the language barrier. And that's why a lot of us get misunderstandings is because we don't know the language under which it was originally written. And that's just as far as those books. I mean, and most people, they don't venture for, far, further enough or farther enough to um, know of the Gilgamesh epics, the Enuma Elish, you know, the Upanishads, you know, from, um, from the Indus Kush, you know, within that, you know, be it the Bhagavad Gita, where they talk about flying machines and they talk about wars where they use nuclear weapons. You know, there's a lot of shit out there. 
And it's beyond what that little 7,000 years ago, they make it seem that, you know, man and woman was created, which, you know, is ridiculous. You know, they found fossils of skeletons that um, they did the carbon dating on them and they date back to 2 million, 3 million years ago. It's crazy, you know. And, and you know, they, the way they, not only the carbon dating, but they test the um, most concentrated aspect of the DNA, which is the marrow inside the bone. Two, three million years. Men, men and women, eight, eight and a half feet tall. I know it sounds like a cop out, but I wouldn't suggest any books. What I would suggest is that people make that sound decision in their mind and in their heart to, to, to achieve knowledge, to go for the knowledge, and these things will come to them. Some of the people, they hear it differently, like even if they hear what I'm saying, they may hear it differently than someone who doesn't really care. They want to hear about, you know, some studio stories or, you know, we had, we bagged one from the club and we took them to, took it to the studio, some wild shit. Like, you know, they want to hear that. So that's what they're going to receive. The other stuff might just go over their heads. So it's all in what you, like what we were talking about earlier. It's the, it's the, it's the seed that you plant and sow within your mind and your heart that um, comes into fruition in your external world.